Hey guys, Darren Friend 5 here from the Strategy Cantina. And for the first video on this channel, I'd like to cover the battle that made me fall in love with the Battlestar Galactic Universe. That battle being the Battle of New Caprica. The Battle of New Caprica was an engagement fought between Cylon and Colonial forces in the third year of the Colonial Exodus and during the Second Cylon War. The battle would later be known as the most pivotal battle in the entire war. Victory meant the rescue of almost 40,000 people, which made up almost all of the remaining human race. Failure could mean extinction. The plan for the Battle of New Caprica was developed by Admiral William Adama. In case of failure, Commander Lee Adama of the Battlestar Pegasus, which was a superior vessel, and its entire fighter complement was to remain with the Colonial Fleet to protect it, but also to become the flagship of the fleet should Galactica perish. The space attack was coordinated with the New Caprican Resistance. When the Galactica arrived, the Resistance would begin a full-scale uprising against their occupying Cylon force. This, in theory, would force the Cylons to fight on two fronts, distracting their fire and attention between the Galactica in orbit and the New Caprican Resistance on the ground. Upon arriving in the system, Admiral Adama, safely hidden inside the New Caprican Nebula, deployed two Raptor squadrons escorted by two Viper Wings, under the command of Galactica's CAG, Captain Luan Katrine, to deploy Swallow-class guided drones in a cluster, so that Dreadus would mistake them as the battle stars Galactica and Pegasus, tricking the Cylons into believing that they just jumped into the system to begin their attack. By this time, the civilian uprising on the planet was in full swing, distracting the Cylons' attention as planned, which is exactly what the Colonials hoped. Moving their defensive blockade consisting of two base stars and their respective complement of raiders to attack the drones posing as the battle stars Galactica and Pegasus, but once the Cylon Raiders had reached the drones, it was too late. Now comes the most courageous strategy ever seen in B Battlestar Galactica. On the orders of Admiral Adama, the Galactica made an interplanetary combat jump above the New Caprican City, and quickly started hurtling towards the planet's surface. As Galactica fell, the Battlestar's FTL drive was spooled, whilst also deploying an entire Viper Squadron. This would come to be known as the Adama Maneuver, to aid the Resistance in gaining the stolen keys to the civilian flotilla. Miles and miles below the Cylon fleet, we were supposed to stop them. The Vipers quickly start eliminating Cylon raiders, defense towers, and other targets of strategic importance. After deploying fighters, the Glatzka engages FDL engines are near 100 feet from the surface of New Caprica, leaving nothing but its outline in flames. When Glatzka re-entered its orbital position, Admiral Dahmer discovered that the Cylon raiders were either returning from the drone decoy, or shutting down the fighter squadron still deployed in orbit. Due to this, Cylon base stars were forced to engage Galactica without the cover of their raiders, and putting themselves at great risk of being destroyed under the immense power of Galactica's shells. But this was exactly what Admiral Adama had counted on from the very beginning. With the base stars and fighters tied up with Galactica and her squadrons, it left the escaping civilian convoy unhindered as they made their jump to light speed. But luck can only hold out for so long, for as the Galactica moved into position to turn the base stars into space debris, Two additional base stars that the Cylons had kept in the reserve position just outside the system entered orbit over New Caprica, on the Galactica's aft. This is what Admiral Dama had been dreading. This caught the Galactica in a deadly crossfire between the four base stars and two raider wings. With Cylon torpedoes, flat grounds and cannon shells hammering into Galactica's hull, breaching the hull in places as the battle stars tore through the Galactica's armor placing, and knocking the FTL drive temporarily offline. The Admiral Dama's mission to distract the Cylons away from the fleeing New Caprican civilians allowed them to survive. It seemed the Glatzka wouldn't be so lucky. Admiral Dama knew that this had to be the end. But unknown to the Cylons, and even to Admiral Dama himself, the Colonials had back up themselves. Entering the system via combat jump, the Battlestar Pegasus under the command of Commander Lee Adama appeared on the Cylons' flank. Violating superior officer's orders and leaving just the Pegasus' fighter squadrons to protect the Colonial fleet, Battlestar Pegasus had jumped to the new Caprica system to rescue the Galactica from certain destruction. The behemoth that was the Mercury-class Battlestar charged the Cylon's base stars, firing all forward guns and tearing a base star apart with its first volley. This forced the Cylons to refocus their efforts towards the Pegasus and away from the Galactica. With Galactica's FTL engine back online and all fighters had touched down, the Galactica hastily jumped out of the system along with the last civilian ships. Though Commander Adama had rescued the Galactica, it now seemed the Pegasus was to take the Galactica's place and be destroyed. For while in the act of distracting the Cylons fire away from the Galactica, the Pegasus had sustained catastrophic damage to major systems and the FTL was knocked out. Not wanting to go down without a strong fight, Commander Adama, in an, in an attempt to pay the Pegasus' destruction with Cylon blood, 
ordered the immediate evacuation of the Pegasus on the emergency evacuation Raptors. Commander Adama set the Pegasus onto an auto-ramming course with the Cylon Base Star and engaged full throttle. As the Pegasus cut through the Base Star as if it was made of rubber, a severed flight pod propelled from the explosion of the separation smashed into a second Base Star, reducing that to a heap of space debris. The Pegasus definitely made the Cylons pay for its destruction, though the destruction of the Pegasus, which had the production facilities to build Viper Mark IIs, was a devastating blow to the colonial fleet. And though the fleet would never know the safety and security that it did with the Pegasus, they would eventually go on to find Earth, making the Pegasus' loss not in vain.